Hey guys, Steve and Tiffany. Different Chick Farm and Orchard, and we're back on our winter growing series here. Um, we believe in pushing the envelope. It would have been nice to have all this stuff planted in the fall, wouldn't it, Tiff? That's for sure. But we didn't get it done, so we're trying to show you that you don't necessarily always have to play inside someone else's rules. We don't have to color inside the lines. We can push things. While it's not <laughs> ideal, we can try things. We can make things work. So We our, are past the winter solstice now, though. Hey, so, we are. I mean, you so, know, hey. Only the, look up from here. The days ain't getting shorter no more. At least, not right now. <laughs> it is December 26th. Now, we are just coming out of a severely cold freeze for us, right. which is extremely uncommon weather for here in East Tennessee where we're at in zone 6B, 7A. We, part of our property, as I've said before, sets 6B tendencies, and some of it's more 7A. So we, unfortunately, the majority of the property that is usable is 6B. We deal with that. It's, in the summer, it's nice because it's five to eight degrees cooler in the evenings down there than it is up on the other part of the property. In the winter, unfortunately, it's still five degrees cooler down there than it is up here. So that makes it harder to grow certain things. Um, but anyway, with no further uh, conversation, let's talk about what we're doing today. Um, we're going to work with something you may or may not be familiar with. We grew it for the first time, what, about five years ago, six years ago, something like that. Um, it, it readily continues to grow. It's a... It's, it's a nice volunteer crop. Um, it's still seed. I've actually got some growing in one of my greenhouses right now because it seeded itself sometime or another. Right. And so it's it's corn salad. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with corn salad. It's also called mache, mosh, depending on what where you're at and what, how you pronounce it. Um, this one is the Baker Creek variety from Rare Seeds. Um, it is... Uh, Vert A Coir Plain too. <laughs> I'm sure I butchered that. It's French, I'm sure, and I don't speak French. Um, it's also considered lamb's ear. Um, really? It, yep, it's a, it's a lamb's ear. Hmm. It gets its name corn salad from the fact that it tends to grow wild in cornfields. And you can actually plant this in the fall in your cornfield after you remove your corn. So if you've got a backyard garden and you've got an eight foot by eight foot corn plot and once you take your corn out, you don't know what to do with it for the year, sow you some nice tasty greens that you can eat on all winter long. Now, these are our, tend to be a little nutty flavored so you get a little more of an intense flavor out of it than you would a regular old lettuce. Um, it, it's a little nutty. Um, they uh, are very packed in nutrients, minerals and vitamins. Um, I'm not going to remember the exact numbers. You can look it up. But something like 3.5 ounces of this is 64% of your vitamin C intake for the day. Hmm. Uh, something like 4.5 ounces of this is um, like several of your minerals. I'm going to get these wrong. Magnesium and so forth. It's got your... Uh, vitamin intake for the day in it so it's a great thing rich in nutrients and minerals uh, <clears throat> vitamins to uh, substitute into your diet um, you can use it straight up as just your only salad green um, but you can mix it with other lettuces and so forth to uh, make it better you know even if you don't have your own romaine lettuce at home if you buy one at the store you can mix this in with it to give it a little more Vitamins, minerals, a little more punch, a little more flavor, make your salad more interesting. And you, you, it does have very small leaves, so you don't compare it at all to your other lettuces. No, no, no. Because it's not even going to be close. No. Um, now this also uh, you can use as a cooked green too. Mm -hmm. You can cook this like you would most other greens. So if you want to cook it, that's an <laughs> option. Um, this is tends to be not. I'm sure every variety is a little different. This tends to be hardy down to five degrees, Tiffany. Mm -hmm. Five degrees. Uh, we generally don't see too many single degree temperatures here where we're at. Now, that being said, we just finished up with 
multiple days of single degree temperatures and even zero degrees with wind chill. What did wind chill get to? Negative 17, 20? Negative something. Yeah, negative 17, 20 degrees wind chill. So that's cold. That being said, our farmer's friend tunnel is doing great with our crops. Tiffany went down unheated. and checked it today. It's a completely unheated structure at this time. When we move our toma early tomatoes in later in the uh, early spring, late winter, we will start putting some put supplemental heat in there. Right now it's completely unheated. Right. And so Tiffany, and it's, the stuff grows slow, but Tiffany has lettuce, spinach. Radishes. Radishes. Peas. 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 Uh, Mizuna. Mizuna. Swiss chard. Kale. Calabri. And shortly you'll have onions. Yep. So, and we got other stuff planted that's going to be ready to go in. Uh, we were looking at yesterday and today the stuff that I think we got on video from uh, December the 6th. Uh, we got several trays of, uh, of greens that are ready to go in. Uh, we've got cabbage. Mm -hmm. Our golden acre cabbage looks absolutely amazing. Can't wait to get it planted out and get it started. So Tiffany will do us a do us some of those inside and uh, we'll, we'll plant those in a way that we can go back in and interplant our tomatoes later in the season around them. And as the cabbage comes out, then the tomatoes can continue to grow in that in the spot beside them. So uh, also we have, I'm gonna hand this to Tiffany and let her start planting. Um, also we have, this is a VIT, v -I -T from Johnny's and it's still the, it's still the mache. Uh, they don't call it corn salad. They call it straight up mache. Um, and uh, so. And these are very, very tiny little seeds. Not quite um, like your typical lettuce seed. Close to a mustard seed though, honestly. Yep. And for me, honestly, I think two of these per hole is, is going to be excellent. I'm not sure if Johnny's gives a recommendation on their packet here. Let's see. Uh... They got direct sow, and they recommend five and a quarter pounds of seeds for an acre. I'm not planting an acre. They recommend an ounce for a 750 foot roll. That's a reasonable. Um, and they recommend 36 seeds in rolls 12 inches apart. It's 36 seeds per foot. So yes, so that we would definitely, we'd want to multi-sow these with two to three seeds, probably three, I'm probably gonna go with three, three seeds per hole, because we're doing these as transplants, not as direct seeded. Um, and they are a very small uh, plant, if you've ever grown them before. These are fairly slow to germinate, according to Johnny's, 10 to 14 days. Um, They uh, don't like temperatures over 70 degrees. And they recommend you do not sow them if the soil temperature is over 68 degrees. Uh, a lot of your greens tend to go, um, um, the seed goes kind of dormant, and meaning they won't germinate at all. It won't be that the seed's not viable, means it won't germinate. The ones I have growing wild in our greenhouse um, they actually have went all through the summer and not produced anything all through the fall and didn't produce anything and just started about three weeks ago. And like I said earlier, right now it's December 26th. So um, it's first of December, end of November before they even tried to germinate. Um, and actually they're already uh, about that, that size out there in the greenhouse with pretty much I have ignored them. So Johnny says you can sew them a little bit uh, heavier. They give you exact specs on the package and then take the thinnings, what you go in and re-thin as baby mache. Wow. Um, and then for harvest, they recommend picking the whole two to three inch tall um, floret. So pick the whole thing once it gets to maturity. So I'm I have definitely used it as cut and come again before and it works just fine. So. It may not be recommended as that, but you can definitely use it as that if you so desire. So you'll see 
me and Tiffany's got two different approaches to this and neither one is better it's what works for you I am tapping out a couple of seeds and she is picking them out of her hand and doing it if you have carpal tunnel my way does not work well my hand cramps mine does too but I'm good right now <laughs> and so I can't do it and what I'm aiming for here is two seeds so somewhere between one and three, and I'm really going to push for that at least two. And all I am doing is tapping on this package. And I think I showed y'all before in one of our previous videos, but I'll tell you again. If all the seed starts to work out here to the end, I just simply turn the package back up and then turn it back over. Now we're starting these in our organic pro mix. Tiffany, do you know the name of this particular variety? Um, pro mix organics, mitochondria, something like that. Uh, Don't worry about there's, it. There's there's only like two different kinds of the actual pro mix for professionals. Um, we get these by a compressed bell, um, and it is very very expensive but it is a great um, medium to use we and couldn't get this last year yeah so we had to make our own last year but we were able to get it early enough this year and get our order in so we have a humongous pallet which was also very fun to move um, couldn't quite move it with our tractor because it was actually even bigger than the tractor and trailer but they hauled it into us um, they had to split it into two pallets for that. So, uh, but we got it. We're excited. Um, it is a great uh, product. I love it. Um, so far, the plants have grown wonderfully well in it. Um, works even better some, than some of the compost we have used in the past. So, very, very impressed with it. Very happy. And this is something that your greens like lettuce and so forth will, will really thrive in because they like this delicate um, medium that drains well and it, allow the, it allows the roots to grow well too. So Tiffany's done before I am. You wanna, I know the back of the Baker Creek package will have some nice little information. You wanna pick some of that information to tell them about it, Tiffany? So, one, if you're lucky enough to order off Baker Creek Seed, this may be one of the free gifts they send you. Um, they kind of send, send them sort of in like a month by month. If you order a bunch of seeds this month, most likely you're going to get the same free seed packets for that month. And then sometimes they'll change it up for the next month or it may be every quarter. But that's kind of what we've noticed. But every year it seems to be we don't ever have to buy these because they are always free gifts, which is really great. That one wasn't a free gift. Uh huh. See, free gift. Uh -huh. Oh, it was. It was. So this, this, they don't normally do that. This was actually a regular package of the corn salad, mm -hmm. and they uh, gave it out as a free gift. So, um, but Baker Creek says on this variety, and it may be all of the corn salads. Um, it's high re highly nutritious forage for the wild plant of Eurasia, recognized for its soft, subtle texture and nutty flavor. The delicate culinary nature of Mache belies its unparalleled cold hardiness, making it the perfect winter or cool season green and ideal for winter farmers markets um, or winter market farmers. Uh, so you can sow it in early fall or late winter, which we're actually right at the first of winter because winter starts at the end of December. Yeah, we're not even quite midwinter yet, but but we're going to be this, this is going to be we'll do this two ways. We'll probably do a little bit of this inside the tunnel so that it'll grow faster, and then the rest of this we'll probably do about three trays. Of this these are one twenty eight cell trays. We're going to do about three of them. Tiffany decided, and so. At least two of these trays will go in the field, and Tiffany will put them under roll cover and take care of them that way. And like I said, some of this is an experiment for us because we haven't done some of this, yeah. so you'll get a, you'll get to see how it works for us. And it specifically does say cold frame or low tunnel may allow harvest all winter long. Um, 
So there's a lot of stuff you can grow outside in our zone. Um, under tunnel, under cover. Our frost blankets are a great um, tool to use. I have not got brave enough to look at my cabbage and cauliflower and broccoli down in the field that was under covers um, from this weekend. I did not do that today, hopefully tomorrow, but we'll see how damaged it was or if it was damaged or if I have anything left. Who knows, but it was, it was an experiment and it was a trial and it worked up until probably this weekend. But we know that for next year. We know what will work well, and what we, doesn't work. We rarely we, get zero degrees. Yeah. Especially with that kind of wind chill. Yeah. We definitely had rolling blackouts in our area because everybody was using so much power and it was Christmas weekend. So we were part of those rolling blackouts. So 15 minutes of no power at all. Yeah. You know what a rolling blackout is? That's where they schedule to turn your power off. They don't tell you that that's <laughs> what's going to happen. But they schedule it for them so that they can keep power going to everybody by lessening the power demand um, at certain times. Keeps transformers from blowing, overloading the system. And while it's not fun to even be without power for 15 minutes if you need it, it's a whole lot funner than being without power for hours or days because you uh, fried the system. Now, I am done with mine. And what I typically do because with lettuce seeds and like this one, you are only supposed to cover it like with a fourth of an inch, which is barely nothing. If you have got um, sort of dry mix like we've got here, what you can do and makes it really easy is just kind of shake it a little bit, uh, pat it down, and then just go water it and it most likely is going to cover it all you need. Sometimes you can cover it with a little bit of soil, sometimes that's a little too much. Um, but you can easily just pat it down or just leave it as it is. Take your uh, sprayer on your um, kitchen faucet and just spray it down and it covers it usually all that it would ever need. So. And back to another place we differ. Yeah. I, I will. I will take my time and take some of the seed starting mix and actually lay it on top of it. And the reason I do it, this is like the place we differ. The reason I do it is it is much more forgiving of missing your watering if it's not sitting right on the top of the soil. But either way works because we both do it and we both have germination because obviously if one of our ways didn't work, we wouldn't let the other person do it that way no more. So it's all in your preference. And there we go. I am done except for right here. I actually, the only time I did that way, I dropped about six or seven in one spot. So I'm just going to reach down and move about three of them over there. Now, this is all I do. And if this was a heavy soil, that would be a lot on top. But where this is not heavy. Remember, it's the Pro Mix, not compost. Right. Where this is not heavy, while this looks like I'm putting, you know, quarter to a half inch of soil on top of this, I'm not because as soon as we water this, it is going to compact. And when it compacts down, it's going to be a thin layer. Now, it's not necessary, but I do pick out, when I'm doing for small seed like this, I do pick out some of this larger stuff that comes into the compost mix, um, stuff like this, when it's on top. I don't like it on top of my seeds. And most of this stuff has got coconut core or peat moss in it. And when they harvest that stuff, they don't really go through and pick out some of the bigger yeah. stuff. And, and this is a nice product. The Pro yeah. Mix is a nice product. It doesn't have too much stuff in it like that. Um, the, and the stuff that's in it 
would be fine if you're working with the with the most most seeds, and it will work with the lettuce. I just prefer it not to be there. So, as I have showed you before, what we do is we use masking tape for now until we get a better system. Um, this blue painter's tape works real well. This happens to be Scotch brand 2090. And so Tiffany's is corn, salad, and it is from Baker Creek. So Baker BC. Creek. So we'll put BC and today's date 1226. And when we do multi song like several seeds in there, We'll put, did you do two or three? I did two to three. Okay, so Tiffany did two to three, and I put per hole. So she will wipe off a spot, end spot on hers, and we will stick this tape right to the end or the side of the tray. It, it, a lot of times we do the end, but sometimes it depends on what we're growing, we'll do the side. Like, I did some peas and some beans earlier, and I did it on the side because I was doing a trial. So I only did, like, three rows of each, so that way I could actually write on the side what the different rows were. This one, however, is a whole tray. And so mine will have JS for Johnny's Selected Seeds. And the same date. And I did two per hole. Don't get me wrong. Some of them have three. But I was really pushing for two. Now, one reason you might ask why Tiffany did two to three and I was pushing for two, the Johnny seeds are way fresher than the Baker Creek seeds. So... Johnny's are tested. Um, they've always got their germination on there. Um, this one specifically was 97%, which is pretty darn good. Um, for any type of seed. But it so, was also this year's seeds, and the Baker Creek was last year's seeds. So. so. Alright, guys. I hope you have thoroughly enjoyed. All we got to do is left is water these and wait on them to germinate. So Tiffany is going to kill our camera for us. And uh, we'll get this up and posted for you. Hey, if you haven't, why haven't you liked and subscribed to our channel? We need you to subscribe to our channel. We need you to like this video. We need you to hit that little notification bell so that you get notified when we have a new video. And we need you to share this with friends and family. It'll really help us out so we can bring you more videos like this. Thank you and have a good one.